Today we are talking constructed wetland filters. What's up everybody, it's Jack from Atlantis Water Gardens. On today's episode of You Ask, We Answer, we are talking about constructed wetland filters. Okay, what the heck is the constructed wetland filter? It's a larger filter, usually we're gonna use on a larger pond. Now I'm gonna go get with Ed Ballou, who's actually the inventor from Aquascape of the constructed wetland filter, and let him explain to us what the function is and how it actually helps your pond. Okay, I'm here with Ed Ballou from Aquascape. Ed, give me a rundown on how a wetland filter works and how it might help someone's pond. A wetland filter, basically, it, um, it's gonna remove toxins out of the water. So those toxins are a combination of organic compounds that build up, that's gonna be from fish waste, could be from leaf debris, windblown stuff coming in. And if you just leave that inside of the pond, what's gonna happen is it's gonna slowly decay and it releases ammonia compounds into the water. And if left unchecked, um, they'll cause algae problems, they can cause fish problems, could cause fish death. Um, the water could turn green. So there's a whole host of things that could happen from that. So we're gonna start digging in the center for our centipede and our snorkel module. We're gonna go down enough that it's below the bottom of the aqua blocks so then the water can get pumped in, flow up through that centipede into the layer of aqua blocks and finally up through the layers of rock and gravel. Okay, we have our excavation finished. We're ready to put our fabric and our liner in, and then that'll follow by our centipede snorkel and our aqua blocks. Our fabric, our liner is in the excavation. Next. Hard to ramp up this. You know? Oh, I know. <laughs> our fabric, our liner is in the excavation. Next comes our centipede modules along with our snorkel and then the layer of aqua blocks. <laughs> Okay, before we get started with filling the whole wetland in with our graduations of rock and gravel, I want to explain to you what we've done already. There's a sedimentation chamber down on the bottom mm -hmm. that's going to take out the big particles out of the water. And then from there, we have different layers of gravel. Those, that gravel layer is basically home to different types of microorganisms. We're gonna add bacteria, enzymes, and, and things like that into the water. But once that stuff gets established, those little microorganisms are gonna feed off of all of those organic compounds that could potentially cause the water problems. So by doing that wetland filter, it eliminates all of that. Our liner and underlayment are in the excavation. That's what's gonna make it watertight. The snorkel and centipede modules are all in. They've gone in before the aqua blocks. Now our aqua blocks layer is in. We've backfilled around the outside edge just with some cobbles to lock it all in tight. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna start putting graduations of rock inside our wetland filter. So we're gonna put about eight inches of this larger cobble, which is about a four to six inch cobble. Then on top of that, we're gonna step down to a two to three inch. And then finally, we're gonna go with about a three quarter inch gravel on top. So it's gonna pass through three layers of gravel before it gets to the top of the wetland. And that's where it will exit and make the waterfall. We're doing three uh, different layers of gravel, all different yep. sizes. Why is it crucial that they're all uh, separately sized and why is the smallest size at the top? That's a great, great question. So the bigger gravel, when you have big gravel, you have bigger void spaces, okay? So as the, um, so when you have big void spaces, we have a specific volume of water per second going through the system. So as it goes from the aqua block, it takes 10 minutes to go through that layer. Mm -hmm. The next layer, it's only gonna, it's go only gonna take, to go through that layer, it's only gonna take a minute. Right, minute and a half. And then, so the water speeds up as it gets smaller and smaller through each one of those zones. So from the aqua block to the top, our water velocity gets fastest on the top, so that actually keeps it from clogging up. Okay. So it actually blows any fine sediments out of the top. And sometimes you'll see on the very, very top, kind of in the little backwater areas, you'll see like some little, really, really fine sediments. Mm -hmm. And it's because it kind of has that flushing action going through, which is super, super important. Otherwise, so it won't function properly. At the top, the smaller gravel is almost like a polishing layer where exactly. it's scrubbing and the And then that works well for your plants. So that smaller gravel is really easy for all the plant roots and everything to grow through as well as planting it. Awesome, hopefully yep. you got all that. <laughs> Here is 
the constructive wetland filter. This is the heart of the system. We've got our upflow bog filtration. We're pumping into the bottom. It's flowing up through the aqua blocks and the layers of rock and gravel out the top and then down our waterfall and look at the pond up against the house. So that's all we've got today for constructed wetland filters. It's an advanced pond construction technique, so hopefully we made it relatable enough where it was understandable and clear on how we actually build these filters. Thanks for sticking around today, guys. Really, I appreciate everybody that's watching this. If you would, please hit that like button. Leave me a comment. I would really like to hear from you. And subscribe if you'd like to see more of what we're doing over here at Atlantis Water Gardens.